Thanks again for joining me here at But Now Ministry, and today we're going to continue through our series on funerals, and this is part four, as we talk about the difference between Israel's doctrine, the prophetic program, God's kingdom program that is going to be on the earth, God's earthly kingdom, versus our Apostle Paul's revelation of the mystery the body of Christ, the mystery program, which was kept secret. We're Again, we're going to compare Israel's program, which was spoken, compared, and contrasted to the body of Christ's program, which was kept secret. As we go through Psalm 23, the most misused psalm, probably in all of the history of this country, and they misuse it at your grandma, my grandma, or anybody else that you knew, their funeral. And possibly, hopefully not my funeral, but possibly yours, unless you get things right. And so, we are in Psalm 23, verse 3. He restoreth my soul, he leadeth me in the paths of of righteousness for his name's sake okay so is the body of Christ led on paths of righteousness for his name's sake let's see what Paul says Titus 3 5 not by works of righteousness with which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost so it's not by works of righteousness it's not by paths of righteousness for us today as the church the body of Christ Psalm 23, verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, I will fear no evil for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Who is in the valley? The valley of the shadow of death, according to Israel's prophetic program. Because they'll tell you that you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, right? That's this world, right? Well, let's see what it says about the valley. Zechariah 12, 11. And again, we get definition in Israel's prophetic program. Zechariah was a prophet of Israel, correct? In the day, and Israel's program was spoken by the mouth of all the holy prophets. Okay? So this is what was spoken. The Apostle Paul's message was not known back here. It was kept secret. Romans 16.25, okay? Compare Acts 3.19 with Romans 16.25. One was spoken, one message was spoken, one message was kept secret. Yes, there's more than one message in your Bible. There's more than one plan of salvation in your Bible. Oh, <gasps> really? There's just not one gospel? No. Galatians chapter 2, verses 7, 8, and 9 makes it very clear that there's more than one. Okay? That those verses tell you that there's a gospel of the circumcision and there's a gospel of the uncircumcision. There's also in Revelation the everlasting gospel. And in Galatians chapter 3, there's also the gospel of Abraham. So there's quite a few gospels in your Bible. There's even the gospel of the kingdom in Matthew. So you better get your gospels right too. Because your pastor's lying to you telling you there's only one gospel. Zechariah 12, 11, In the day shall there be great mourning in Jerusalem, as the mourning of Hadadrimon in the valley of Megadon. Zechariah 14, 4, And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And Zechariah 14, 5, And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azale. Yea, ye shall flee, like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah the king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. And notice in that verse, the word Lord is capitalized, L-O-R-D. That always means Jehovah. Okay? That does not mean Jesus Christ as the head, the body of Christ. That means Jehovah God. 
Luke 3, 5, Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth. That is what's amazing. That is what happens when Christ comes back. Everything is going to be level. Every valley will be filled. Every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth. To me, that is so, so amazing, that picture right there. But hey, we're building the kingdom now. It's the end times now. Okay, well, that happens in the end times. Has it happened? Is everything level? <laughs> Gosh, man. So does the body of Christ walk through a valley of shadow of death? Do we fear evil? Does God use his rod and staff to comfort us? Let me think. Don't we live in a present evil world, not in a valley? And the devil is the God of it. Galatians 1.4, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Do we fear? 2 Timothy 1.7, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Does God use his rod and staff to comfort us? Romans 5, 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, he's not going to take us to the woodshed? Like Pastor James Reverend Dr. McDonald says? Colossians 2, 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Verse 10, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. And Colossians 2.13, and you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Wow. So he's forgiven us all trespasses. We have peace with God. We're complete in him. But yet, and we're on a present evil world. Not a valley. <laughs> Psalm 23, verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Does God prepare a table for the body of Christ? Does God anoint us? <sighs> now, if you call Willow Creek over here, it's, it's one of the biggest churches in North America, Bill Hybels was the founding pastor. If you call, I would encourage you, just call. And you'll get their, if you get their voicemail, it says that they have anointed teaching. Well, let's see what the anointed is according to the Bible. Anointed, remember those two words, anointed teaching, okay? It's kind of like large shrimp, okay? It's kind of like military intelligence. It's kind of like Christian evolutionist, okay? Just to give you a hint, there are 61 verses in the Old Testament that contain the word table in Israel's prophetic program. One verse in the New Testament for Israel, which would be anything from Acts chapters 1 through 8 and or Hebrews to Revelation. That's the New Testament for Israel. <clears throat> anything after the cross, all the way up to Acts chapter 8. is New Testament doctrine for Israel, okay? Then, you have to be very careful how you interpret Acts 9 through Philemon, okay? You have to rightly divide Israel's program from the body of Christ, and then Hebrews to Revelation is the New Testament for Israel, okay? Here are two verses from the Apostle Paul which also pertain to Israel. That's why it's very important to rightly divide because Paul will talk about Israel in his writings. All of Paul's epistles are not for us, but yes, they are for the body of Christ once you rightly divide them from Israel's program. 
here are Paul's and the one verse in the New Testament. Remember, the eight verses in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John before the death of the testator is Old Testament. I will run those two. And here's the Old Testament doctrine for Israel, which again is before the death of the testator. Hebrews 9, verses 15 through 18 tells us that we Israel doesn't get a New Testament until the death of the testator. So Luke 20, verse 5 also confirms that. And it's not until his blood is shed, the cup of his blood, okay? Matthew 15, 27, And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Mark 7, 28, And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. Luke 1, 63, And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, His name is John, and they marveled all. Luke 16, 21, And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. Luke 22, 21, But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. Luke 22, 30, That ye may eat and drink at my table in the kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. John 12, 2, There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. John 13, 28, Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. Okay, so those are verses that talk about doctrine for Israel and what the table, what was going on with the table, okay? Now here is what Paul says. According to the revelation of the mystery. Paul, according to the revelation of the mystery, Israel is present in both verses. Romans 11, 9 and 1 Corinthians 10, 21. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. And 1 Corinthians 10, 21, You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. And New Testament for Israel, Hebrews is written to Hebrews. Okay, if you, In case you're wondering who wrote Hebrews, if you have a Schofield reference Bible and you look at the top of the book of Hebrews, it says Paul wrote it. Well, that's wrong. Okay, Paul did not write the book of Hebrews. How could Paul write the book of Hebrews? He tells you that you're complete in Christ. He tells you that you're at peace with God. But then in Hebrews chapters 9 and 10, you can lose your salvation? Paul's going to teach doctrine contrary to his own doctrine? Put two and two together. He, read Hebrews chapter 2 and 3. Maybe that would convince you that it's not Paul. Hebrews 9 verse 2. And this is what it says about the table in the New Testament for Israel in the book of Hebrews, which Hebrews tells us the cross of Christ for Israel, what the cross does for Israel in Hebrews. Okay, Romans tells us what the cross of Christ does for us today. Okay. Hebrews 9, verse 2, For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick, and the table, and the shoe bread, which is called the sanctuary. So clearly, when you look at the table, it's all about Israel. Okay. Let's take a look at anointing. Does the body of Christ get the anointing? If we do, we do not need to study any more. Again, we know who John is a minister to, right? John is a minister to the circumcision. Galatians 2 verse 9, Paul tells us that. James is a minister to the circumcision, and in his writing in verse 1, in James chapter 1 verse 1, he wrote to the 12 tribes of Israel. So clearly, a minister of the circumcision. And John, Galatians 2 9 tells us, that John is also a minister to the circumcision. And, you know, Matthew chapter 10, Jesus sent them where? He sent them only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, okay? Just as Jesus was. And Jesus was also a minister to the circumcision. Romans 15, 8 confirms that. And he was also only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Matthew 15. And here's what John says to the circumcision. 1 John 2.27 But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, 
and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. So, like I said, call Willow Creek. Okay, it's in Barrington. Call them up. They have anointed teaching. Well, the verse says in 1 John that if you're anointed, you don't need to be taught anymore. So what is anointed teaching? Again, oxymoron, right? Large shrimp. So much for study in the worthy walk, right? Because what does Paul tells us? If we are anointed, then we don't need to be taught anymore. Then so much for what Paul says, right? 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And if we're anointed, and if we don't need to be taught anymore, then so much for how we bear fruit in this dispensation of God's grace. Colossians 1, 9, and 10. For this cause also, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. But wait a minute, we're anointed, right? That's what he said at the funeral. We're anointed. Then you don't need to be taught anymore. And then you know what? If you're going to believe him and you don't need to be taught anymore, or better yet, you go to Willow Creek where they have anointed teaching, you're not going to bear fruit. Because you know what? They just taught you not to study. They just taught you not to be filled with the knowledge of his will in spiritual understanding. And so you're not going to be worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing and being fruitful in every good work because they just taught you not to do that. Psalm 23, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So does goodness and mercy follow us, the body of Christ, in this, the dispensation of God's grace? And do we dwell in the house of the Lord? Let's see what Paul says in Romans chapter 7, verses 14 through 21. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Now, goodness and mercy is what Christ did for us on the cross. Titus 3, verse 4 and 5. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. It's what God has done, not us. Mercy and kindness does not follow us in a present evil world, Galatians 1.4, where the devil is the God of it, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And the ministers of Satan are running it, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And how about the house of the Lord? Ephesians 1.3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Ephesians 2.6, And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. No house of the Lord, heavenly places. And so as we continue our series of funerals and how you, me, and so many of us and so many of the funerals we went to have been taught so horribly wrong, so horribly out of context, conflated, allegorized to souls, to souls' destruction. 
we will continue and take a look at next time John chapter 14, 1 through 4, which is another commonly used verse that is been that has been so misused, so conflated, so out of its context to the detriment of your and my soul. Thanks again for listening. If you have any doctrinal questions, go to my website at preachingthegospelthatsaves.com. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channels, my Bible bookstore channel, and thanks again for listening.